Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Kristen Skelton. I'm the founder of Bud Funding, a social enterprise dedicated to sustainable education. I have a very special guest with me. I have Matt Can, and he is a Canadian artist, a graduate of Mount Allison University and New Brunswick Provincial winner of the 2012 BMO Artist First Prize. So Nat has enjoyed exhibiting work across Canada in public galleries, artist-run centers, and workshops dabbling in assemblage, experimental printmaking, and critical inspections of heritage. Such ideas have been explored from coast to coast via residencies and workshops in lands both fantastic and remote. Nat now resides in St. John, New Brunswick, where he currently instructs workshops in printmaking at the St. John Art Centre. Nat, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> you look like you're in nature right now. I am. Uh, everything in front of me is not nature, but I've, uh, I've carefully curated my background to uh, look like I'm in the wild. It's very beautiful. <laughs> so maybe you can share with us a little bit about your journey to becoming an artist specializing in printmaking. Did you always want to become an artist? Was there anyone that inspired you along this path to become an artist? Um, I started off as a painter, a pretty avid painter. I only did painting. I didn't do anything else. And uh, I kind of wanted to make paintings flatter and I was taking printmaking at the time just to sort of fill fill the void and, and finish up my uh, program. And then I got really uh, carried away. I just, there's not much of a, it's, it's basically the intro story to how I became a printmaker. I just, one day I had a press and then next I wanted to know everything about it. Um, I always wanted to be an artist. I, I never really had anything else. Uh, there wasn't really any artists that inspired me to, to go that way. Um, it's just all I've really known how to do uh, other than no other than family. fruit making things. No, no one in my family. Not like, not at all. I just woke up one day and I was like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> Let's just think cool. that we're going straight ahead. Yeah. And for those that may not be familiar with the process of printmaking, could you describe it a little bit? Uh, it's it's the act of taking an image and making multiples of it. That's the that's the most concise, simplistic form of it. Um, there's there's reduction printing and and intaglio printing and and I mean it could go on and on, but basically it is the uh, the method of making additions. I don't do that. I only make one print, so I only make monotypes. Even in uh, etching, which is like the most you know basic form of making addition printing, I still only make like one print with an etching plate. Which to anyone out like to older printmakers out there, anyone who's really into printmaking, they're probably cringing pretty hard at that. But I don't know. I just like making one. Because it's a lot of work to do, like to etch something on the plate and then only make one print out of it, right? Uh, I think it's a lot of work if you've never done it before. Like it seems like a lot of work, but I think most printmaking is kind of a labor of love. Like there's a lot that kind of goes into making a plate, be it a collagraph and etching or a lino cut to get an image. Um, but for me, like you can always make additions, you can always make multiple, uh, you know, multiple copies of, of even like lino prints after you print them, you can just recut them again uh, if you know the layers. But just, just to make one print for me is kind of fun. It's kind of a guilty pleasure too. And what is a lino cut for those that don't have a background in art? Oh, making? Lino, lino cut is you, you take, you know, you take lino, which is basically like linoleum tile. Uh, but there's different, uh, there's different, um, there's a deer behind me. You can't see it. There's is different, there? yeah, <laughs> there's That's different, uh, there's different grades of lino. So like there's soft lino and hard lino, which is what we have in our floors, but like a really soft lino you can cut into and you can make a uh, multiple layered prints. 
or like or prints with malt like each each layer of your your lino cut acts as a different color so you can create some really really beautiful uh multi-layer prints with that very cool yeah. and i know that you've started to work with carbon upcycling technologies and have been incorporating their materials into the inks that you use so how did this partnership come about and maybe you can tell us a little bit about how you make your inks um i've always wanted to make my own inks intaglio ink specifically intaglio is the the process in printmaking which in images um incised so there's cuts made into a plate and then the ink fills into those cuts and then the paper bleeds into those those cuts you make so all the ink sort of rests there like little valleys and rivers and that's how you get your image um basically the incised line holds the ink that that basically creates the image but i proposed the idea to cut to make my own ink using uh using uh, cut materials, graphite, and whatever else they had to offer, uh, just because it seemed like the most—it seemed like the most logical thing for me to do with it. Like I didn't—I didn't really have any ideas other than just to make ink. I just thought it would be just such a fascinating thing, and I thought it would be a great use of all this sort of um, excess, you know, material that is kind of uh, vague in its usage. So I thought if we could turn it into ink, then we could turn it into t-shirts, we could turn it into whatever, postcards, blah, 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 blah. There's, I mean, it just seemed like it could open a lot of doors. And then of course, once I started to make the ink, I was like, oh, I could just make graphite sticks. I can make all kinds of crazy art supplies with this. So I feel like I really just started to uh, to uh, scratch the surface. I also, um, I've also kind of like to take printmaking forms and try to reduce them down to make them as green as possible. So instead of using some the more stronger drying oils, I'm only using like linseed, or no, I'm only using soy oil, sorry, cold pressed soy oil, uh, which is kind of the most like dulled down version of it. Um, just to see if I can make, also just to see if I can make something marketable. But there's still a lot of uh, fine, fine tuning to undergo for this. Mm -hmm, for sure. And some business groups envision that the use of carbon upcycled products in artistic practices is a form of activism, also known as artivism. Does the social aspect of incorporating upcycled materials into your artistic practice influence your art? Is artivism and social consciousness part of your practice and inspiration for your art and your message? Um, I would say utilize these products as a conscientious material choice, uh, something to be considered in sort of the, the slice of the pie as much as aesthetics and, you know, socio-political discourse and the mode of response, scale, history, narrative, all those things. Uh, I mean, I, I guess the act of taking a graphite or like recycled materials and turn turning them into a new product is kind of a, you know, activist thing in itself. But for me, uh, the what that material or what that product I'm making represents uh, should be should be acting towards something else rather than its own individual uh, thing. And your art has an innovative technical layer. What kind of feedback do you get from your art audience, in particular, the technical aspects? Uh, most people just ask me how I do it because they, they think it's one thing or like, especially other printmakers, they think it's one thing, but it's 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 not. Uh, it's lithography dulled down. So lithography is normally you etch onto stones, like big giant pieces of like limestone. And then you you run that through a specialized press, and uh, I just said that's a lot, that's a lot of work. So I tried to dull that down to do it without the big stone and with the big press and everything else. Um, yeah, but when people, you know, when I start talking about the technical things, it's what follows is usually a very dulled down explanation of of the technical particulars. Um, I mean, I. 
can break it down, but in, in short, it's just a lot of photography, Photoshop, chemicals, carpentry, more chemicals. And yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's all those things trying to re-engineer into more eco-friendly uh, methods. So, oh yeah, additionally, right now I'm like, I'm printing on bark and like, uh, it's like I've been taking bark and trying to flatten it out and then use that as a, as a plate. Uh, so that, that in itself as a, as a technical endeavor is, is a lot to undergo. Mm -hmm. And in your artistic process, how do you find working with the carbon byproduct art material? Are there advantages or disadvantage? Is it versatile? I'm, I'm just curious about the performance of it as a medium. Um, I think there's pros and cons to everything in terms of versatility. I, I like, I said earlier, I don't think we've really dented what's possible. Um, you know, I kind of had a very straightforward idea of what I wanted to do with it. And then, you know, once I started to work with it, I, you know, kind of exploded into more things. Uh, but as I said earlier, my, my efforts in making products needs a lot of fine tuning. Things are a little messy. I think the, the graphite that we're using is almost too fine. Uh, normally you want it a little bit more chalky, but this is like, this is like, oh, it's, it's, it's too good. So it's, it's a little, uh, it, it gets a little bit everywhere. It's not a, it's not a bad thing. I just have to use some, some different binding agents. Um, but again, I'm still trying to, uh, adjust and that could be the result of like a number of different culprits. So I want to know what's the, what's your favorite thing about what you do? Uh, I have a print studio to myself where I can jam 90s hardcore boom rap and no one questions it or bothers me. Um, and, uh, I don't know, just telling someone you're an artist is pretty cool. Like with, with confidence. I don't know. feels good. Do you hope to inspire younger people to become artists? Oh, I hope so. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> And if people want to connect with you or learn more about what you do, how how would they connect with you? How would they find out more about your art? Uh, Y'all can find me on natcan, N-A-T-T-C-A-N-N dot com or on Gramtown at N-A-T-T-C-A-N-N. Um, or I'm just all over the, the interspace doing weird online things lately, uh, as is COVID's want. Or you can find me in St. John, bumming around. St. John, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere on the street in St. John? Just somewhere loitering, who knows? <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for spending your time with us and sharing your perspective and, you know, doing something new and innovative and incorporating uh, maybe to some might be a waste product. And yeah, like keep us posted on how all your tinkering goes and you know what you what you find out. And um, definitely if anyone a part of the bud funding community or just out in the YouTube community, definitely hit uh, hit up Nat if you have any questions. And thank you so much for being here.